to the giraffe. And we know that because they have the same skull shape, as well as the same what's called a prehensile tongue. So tongue they use as a tool, wrap it around trees, and strip it for their leaves for food, things like that. Uh, the Okapi is actually so elusive that the Western world did not know about them until 1901. I do see some animals up on this hill on the left-hand side. Those orange animals are bongos. Otherwise known as a ghost of the forest because they're so rarely seen. Uh, both the male and the female bongo have horns once they're full grown. They're kind of heavy and they hold their heads back. Helps them move to the forest. And also over there you might notice some taller tan antelope. Those are greater kudu. And I know just from here that those kudu are females. That's because they don't have any horns. Males, they would have horns. But if I'm seeing female kudu, I will not see any males. They will separately in a bachelor herd. Uh, that runoff of water right there is coming to the Soppy River. So we're headed this way and enjoy the great ecosystem. See what different kinds of animals we can find. Uh, maybe hippos if we get lucky. Uh, we're looking for hippos. We're going to look for dark shadows in the water as well as some bubbles. Hippos can hold their breath for about eight minutes at a time. They like to walk across the bottom of the river instead of swim through it. So it can be harder to see, especially if they're all the way down there at the bottom. 
I do see a hippo back over here on the right hand side. Now hippos, they are nocturnal animals. So these are most active at nighttime. Make sure we stay seated back there for me guys. Thank you so much. Now they will go up on the land at night to graze for their food. They are herbivores, which means they eat only plants. But they are one of the largest and most dangerous animals out here in Africa. They are very territorial. Now you will notice a lot of larger white birds over there. Those are peak back pelicans. They get their name from the pinkish color they get on their backs during mating season. Once their eggs are laid, both the male and the female will watch over the nests. The hippos and the pelicans, they live peacefully in the same ecosystem because they're not competing over the same food source. Now, like I said, the hippos are herbivores, and the pelicans, they prefer fish. You also notice a lot of different other kinds of birds in the area. That's because hippos and birds have what's called a symbiotic relationship. So they, that means they work together. Other birds will eat the dead skin off the hippos, and that's really beneficial to the hippos' health. It does look like we're coming up on the croc bridge. So if you look over on the left hand side, you'll see some Nile crocodiles. Now, Nile crocodiles, they can grow as long as a giraffe is tall, which is about 18 to 20 feet. And that is more on the maximum side. They tend to stick more towards 13, 14 feet. Make sure we stay seated all the way back there for me guys. Thank you so much. Have you ever noticed them holding their mouths open? That's not necessarily a sign of aggression. And they do that to help keep themselves cool and regulate their body temperatures. like the foliage is changing again. So the trees are starting to thin out up here. That's a good indication we're heading up towards the savanna. The savanna is a great place to see some of those more widely known animals. Maybe a few big cats if we get lucky. But first coming up on what's going to be the right hand side of the truck, you'll notice a tree that looks a little out of place, maybe even upside down. This is a baobab tree. Baobab trees go leafless almost all year round, storing water in that great big trunk, able to live to thousands of years old. But don't worry guys, we will certainly see some more of those later on. And that is a great view of the savanna out there. I'm already seeing lots of animals, but we're going to wait for a little bit of clearance before we head on down. Oh, and look guys, there's a whole bunch of baby giraffe over here on the left hand side. And they look really tiny from here, but already over eight, nine feet tall. Now the gestation period of a giraffe is about 14 months and that baby is born right at six feet tall if not a little bit taller uh, they do have to be born tall enough to nurse now just like the okapi we saw earlier giraffe have that prehensile tongue we use it as a tool wrap it around trees and strip it for their leaves for food which is great for a giraffe because they value eating way more than they value sleeping they only sleep for about 30 minutes a day and spend most of the rest of their time eating now, believe it or not, that tongue is about 18 inches long. That's long enough to scratch their own eyeballs. Now, giraffe and humans, and well, all mammals actually, we all have the same number of vertebrae or bones in our neck. The number is seven. There's just, just a lot larger than ours is. They also have really large hearts. Their hearts weigh upwards to 30 pounds, as well as having a high blood pressure. It's a lot of work to pump blood through a long neck like that. Now, they actually have the highest recorded blood pressure of all mammals. Now there are some beautiful antelope over here on our left hand side. Those are sable antelope. And they have those curved back horns because of the fight or flight instinct. They will always choose to fight. If a predator jumps on their back, they're simply able to tilt their heads back to protect themselves. Uh, they're also on the emblem of the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. So when you guys leave the village today, turn around, take a look at the sign. You'll be able to recognize the animal that's there. Now when you look across the savanna, there's a couple different characteristics you'll notice. First being all the trees, they're all kind of trimmed at the same height. Well, that's because giraffe, they do a great job keeping the trees trimmed. And the next will be all the red mounds everywhere. These are termite mounds. Uh, they are made out of dirt, dung, and saliva. They bake almost hard as concrete in the sun. Sometimes elephants and larger animals like to use them as scratching posts. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm going to see all these giraffe up here. Now when you see these giraffe, you might notice that their tongue is a really weird color. It's a blackish purplish looking color and that was actually an adaptation the giraffe have to prevent their tongues from being sunburned. Uh, like I said, they spend most of their day eating, so most of their day is spent with their tongues out of their mouths. It would be very uncomfortable to get a sunburn on your tongue. Oh, but they have an adaptation just for that. Fluff a little bit to this baby. Really cool. There's some more babies up here. That's a little giraffe. Now when you're looking at these animals and you're trying to gauge their heights, keep in mind you're sitting right at 8 feet tall. Really cool. It does look like we're coming up on a group of greater flamingo. A group of flamingo is called a flamboyant. Now the greater flamingo, they are the tallest and lightest in color of all the flamingos. And they get that pink color from the beta carotene and the brine shrimp they eat. And when a flamingo lays an egg, they'll build a nest out of mud. They'll build it over a foot tall and let it dry. And that way they're able to protect their eggs from any predators that could be around. I hear those wildebeest and those ancoli cows again. And appreciation for the size of their horns of like cool also helps keep parasites off of their skin. A group of rhino like this is called a crash. A rhino can only see about 10 feet in front of them. They're known for charging. They can charge at a full speed of 35 miles per hour, which is pretty fast if you weigh 5,000 pounds and can only see 10 feet in front of you. Now also over there on the left hand side are some smaller brown animals that are running right now. Those are Bontabok. Now they're sadly extinct in the wild. You can only find them on reserves like this one. And at one point, there are only 17 of them left in the world. But thanks to conservation efforts, their numbers are slowly starting to rise. So that's really great news for the species. They're gonna be right here next to us, actually. See how those Bontabak and that crash of rhino. You're also going to want to keep your eye out on this hill on the left hand side. Sometimes we can find cheetah over here. Now cheetah, they are diurnal animals. That means they're like you and I. And the fact that we're most active during the daytime, they have that awesome camouflage though. It makes them really hard to spot. Now they are the fastest land animals, but they can only run so fast for a couple of seconds. And when they do, they use their tail to help guide them in different directions. And unlike other big cats, cheetah cannot roar. Uh, they can, however, purr and meow. And a group of cheetahs called a coalition. Uh, I do see a cheetah laying down right over here, over our left hand shoulders, kind of in the shade. You just flipped its tail. There's another cheetah kind of parallel with me. Straight back from us, yeah. Really cool. And we're going to keep heading this way though. Uh, we're headed towards a kopi, and a kopi is a rock formation usually inhabited by some lions. Like the vantage point that Savannah gives them. Uh, lions, they are nocturnal animals, they are most active at nighttime, and they are still inactive for 18 to 21 hours out of the day. In a pride of lions, the lioness, the female, should do most of the hunting, and the male lion stays back to protect the pride. You can tell them apart, of course, because the male lion has that great big name. Uh, but no matter if it's a male or a female, in Swahili, the word for lion is Simba. Some 
burrows in the grounds up here. These are warthog burrows. A warthog, they are very smart animals. They're actually the largest burrowing animals. But they do not like to dig their own. They prefer to steal them from other animals. Uh, there's one right here in this burrow. They like to back up into their burrows with their tusks facing forward. They'll protect themselves from predators if needed. Uh, a group of warthog is called a sounder. Beautiful animals. Uh, there are some eggs on the ground over here on the right hand side. Those are ostrich eggs. Ostrich are the largest birds, however flightless. Can run at about 40 miles an hour though. You can tell a male and a female ostrich apart because male ostrich have black feathers and female ostrich have a lighter grayer colored feather. Now just one of those ostrich eggs is equivalent to about two dozen chicken eggs. Now there's a beautiful animal over here on our right hand side guys. This is a scimitar horned oryx and it gets its name because the shape of its horns are shaped like scimitar swords. Now they are primarily desert animals. They can go nine months out of the year without drinking any kind of water. And that's primarily due to the fact that they have a really high internal body temperature. So they do not have a need to sweat like we would. So they don't have a need to replenish it all the time. And they also get most of the water that they need from the vegetation that they eat. So they don't have a need to drink like we would either. Uh, but sadly guys, it does look like our safari is starting to come to an end. Uh, but we saw a lot of great animals out there this afternoon. And if you like the animals that you saw, and you want to do your part to help conserve them, you can start by doing small things at home, such as recycling, or even just learning more about these animals. The more you know about these animals, the more you know how to take care of them and their environments. So I do challenge each one of you, once you get home, to remember your favorite animal out here on the safari, and look up and learn a little bit more about them. And if you're wanting to do a little bit more, you can always donate to the Wildlife Conservation Fund at any of our merchandise or food locations here in Animal Kingdom. And Disney will match that donation dollar for dollar, cent for cent, which is pretty cool. Now I am not going to be dropping you guys off to the post of Warden's Post. I'm actually going to take you guys right back to where I picked you up from. So you're stuck with me for just a little while longer. I'm going to turn off my microphone here in just a moment, call the warden, let them know we are on our way.